I'm Christopher James, fine art purveyor and educator. San Francisco is the destination spot for art collectors from all over the world. Our beautiful city is the perfect backdrop for the San Francisco art market, a prestigious event drawing over 5,000 visitors in attendance just on opening day. It is fitting that the show was held in Fort Mason, a historic military landmark of San Francisco. Just as the Armory Show of 1913 clearly proclaimed the start of the modern art world, a hundred years later San Francisco is leading the way in contemporary art. I was rushing through the maze of buildings to get to what I consider the highlight of my show itinerary. In this day and age, many collectors are first exposed to new work online. I have clients who trust me to source work from all over the world. This is why the presentation, Sight Unseen, Buying and Selling Art Online was of particular interest to me. The event was put forth by the San Francisco Art Dealers Association. The discussion panel was led by Patricia Maloney, Director for Art Practical, and featured Haley Rose Cohen of Artsy, Art Collector Andrew Tufel, and Gallery Owner Wendy Norris. The assembled group weighed the pros and cons of art representation in the digital age. I inquired of the panel whether print publication should be abandoned completely in favor of virtual selling. We all agreed that these wonderful advances in technology and networking have accelerated the art business, but cannot replace the three E's, education, expertise, and experience of the informed art purveyor. After the lively discussion, Patricia Maloney was gracious enough to spend some time with me. I first inquired about art practical and daily serving. These magazines, are they a subscription service or are they free online? They're free online. Okay. So we want to try to reach as many people as possible. Okay. And is there a focus on galleries or particular artists? We actually try to do both. So we publish a lot of reviews and many of those are reviews of gallery exhibitions. But we also do profiles about artists. We do interviews with artists. We do feature-length content that explores a range of subjects that artists, art audiences, I then asked her how the panel was chosen. The panel was, I thought it was really important that the panel represent three clear, distinct perspectives, that of a gallerist, that of a collector, and that of a representative of one of these online art advisory platforms. So because I really wanted to create both a correspondence and a triangulation of how they all operate together. I think any collector works really invested in the work that they produce, it does a lot of different things. They look at art, they do research about art, they talk to people about art, and that can happen in, a, in, a, in a several different ways. Um, so yeah, so that was essentially wanting to make sure that I had these like representative voice in the panel. Art Practical is one of my go-to resources. I was so glad for my time with Patricia. Now I want to share with you some of the treasures you can only find at venues like this. One thing I was most excited about this year was the rare opportunity to view the artwork of painter Michael Daly, which has not made a San Francisco appearance in over 20 years. The art world, especially the Northwest where he resided, grieved the loss of this artist in 2009. He lives on in his dynamic landscapes. The estate is represented by Seattle gallerist Greg Cusera, Let's talk about this masterwork, Deep Blue Sea. He, uh, his work in the early 60s was a uh, very expressionistic landscape oriented painting. And uh, there's a great quote from him where he says, you know, my work was always about landscape, but I never put cows in it. So as he continued to make work, the work quieted down considerably. It got to the point where there were bands of color, and then the bands just opened up. These two pieces are from that period of work in the late 70s through the early 80s, when the work just sort of opened up and you he reduced the land to just this little element at the bottom. And you know, maybe this is clouds up here, but the title of the painting is Deep Blue Sea. So this is maybe a seascape rather than a landscape. Sometimes there's skyscapes where you have the sense that there's barely no land there at all. This, this beautiful mist of color that is very ineffable, it's very hard to describe, but he can give it color, he can give it meaning in that way. And um, he made a switch from oil to acrylic paint in the late 70s when uh, he was diagnosed with MS. 
I look forward to seeing the rest of this collection by Michael Daly on my next trip to Seattle. At this show, you can find masterwork of previous decades, as well as paintings fresh off the easel. The view of the fair from the balcony of the Industry Lounge was mimicked in the map-like canvases of one of my favorite new finds, Regina Scully. The artist's sensation lives in New Orleans and is represented there by Octavia Gallery, a top spot in the area. The series Terra Incognita was prominently displayed in the center of the pavilion, attracting curious collectors from all directions. Laura Sandoval, gallery director, shares with us the inspiration for the artist's well-received new series. So this artist is Regina Scully. She's a young painter based in New Orleans. Uh, she studied at RISD and then moved out to New Orleans and got her MFA at the University of New Orleans. Um, her work is really, uh, has that tension between abstraction and representation. Um, she's an acrylic painter and she's really interested in creating these fictitious landscapes and sort of architectural environments. She uses uh, multiple perspectives to achieve that. And um, you know, this work in particular, she starts all of the paintings with a different method. This work in particular, she started with wood blocks. So she's kind of drawing a wood block print to start these preliminary forms. From that, she just kind of goes with it, moves the canvas around the whole time to create a composition. And um, you know, her last show with us was called Terra and Cognita. So she was really interested in certain that Regina Scully is an artist that we will be keeping an eye on. Laura Sandoval and Octavia Gallery made a smart curatorial choice displaying her work here. In this installment, I have given you a little introduction into what happens when the most talented curators, galleries, and art dealers meet up at Art Market. Keep in touch with me through my website, ChristopherJamesArt.com, and stay tuned for a list of links to the creative people we have met today at the end of this video. I'm Christopher James. Until next time, surround yourself with fine art.